Welcome back to Black Acre Ranch, everybody. My name is Jeff. So another day and another project, right? Another stuff going on. Today is a heyday, which me <laughs> kind of cute. Anyway, which means we've been doing a lot of work stocking up for winter. Winter time, the buffalo are going to need to keep eating naturally, and the grasses don't seem to grow as very well. We have been blessed recently with some rain, and uh, we've made some progress on our foliage in the pasture, but not enough. Um, it is turning green. I've noticed that their consumption of the hay has been minim decreasing. <laughs> so um, anyway, I'm not moving them over to the other pasture yet. Uh, we still need some more rain. We're grateful for the rain we got. It's about a half inch. And um, hopefully we're gonna get some more rain this week. But when we don't have rain or we don't have things growing in the pastures very well, the, the bison start eating more. Now they do, minimize they don't have a different metabolism in the winter um, they don't necessarily eat as much so it can slow down so that's a good news um, the problem is the babies are getting bigger my handling facility is not done yet so i can't sell the babies because i can't work them yet to find out what their weights are that means i'm going to be consuming a lot of hay okay and if i kept going at six bales right now for maybe until end of february that could be about five months six bales a week. So I'm, I'm banking that on the worst case estimate. So today we're gonna to be moving a bunch of hay and that is exactly what I got, a bunch of hay. Now only the first shipment right now has gotten here. Um, that is over here. These bales, that's 31. I have another 31 coming and then another 31. And I know you're gonna say 31, but it's actually 32. So there's a total of, anyway, there's like, you know what? No, there's actually 31. So there's 124 bales in total that are going to be coming. I've got to get these moved into here because look what we did. If you'll remember, our hay was lined up with the circles going opposite across towards the tank. We have cleaned this all up. We have moved all the instruments or all the little tools for the tractor out to here, out to the sides and we are making way for all of the hay. And we're gonna be lining them up straight ways, east-west, all right? So matching the direction of the current ones. So they're gonna be going in. So we've made a ton of room. I don't know how much space I technically need, but as always, you just gotta adapt. I've got a lot of space and we have a lot of hay to move. So I'm gonna move these 31. The guy's on his way, he may only be here in a half hour. I've got to get cracking, and um, this is pretty repetitive stuff. So I may not show you these first 31 moved, but I may show you moving the second set. And uh, anyway, I got to go, all right? Okay, we got these done. This is, yeah, you know, frankly, I don't know. <laughs> so I was in the middle of trying to get the other one halfway through. The other guys came with their two trucks and trailers. I unloaded all those 31. So I've probably still got about 50 sitting out there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13. So there's 13 out here. So out of the 62, I've got 13. Okay. So something I've been looking at and I've been thinking about, these are all second hay, second cuttings for hay, by the way, is uh, <clears throat> I made a boo-boo. Okay. So when you're loading these things in, if you're just going to make a long straight line like this, coming down, kind of like this guy is sitting here, your, my tires, especially since I pushed them outward, um, do this to your hay. And then you have to leave a gap and you can't get very close. Then you can't stack on top because there's gapped a lot. So to remedy that when you're doing the hay, at least what I'm doing, is I'm trying to build a row at a time all the way across and then come back and start coming back. Also, if you just line them all up, you're going to run right into your hay bales all the time. So if you have a side one that's kind of a comparison, you know when you're getting close and you can put it down. So it's not so hard to stack them in a line when you have something on the side visually you can gauge off of. So anyway, second cuttings. It's time to get cracking on this. I've got about another, I don't know, you do the math, man. I don't really care right now. i got a butt load. So I've got a lot more to do and we'll try and get you some shots of it, I guess. Enjoy, don't zone out, and I'll talk to you afterwards about what my plan is to try and find out if I got good hay or not.
it's gotten a little dark, so we are going to be doing this by light. So we got headlights. I don't know if you can see this, so I'll describe it later, but I think we've got three rows and almost two top rows. Takes a while, okay. Our guys have been doing it for a half hour, and obviously, uh, we've only made some progress. I'm about the fourth row down on the bottom. Started the third row on top, so I'm gonna keep doing this. I'll catch you in a wee bit. Don't go anywhere. Okay, guys, got that done. Okay, I, I probably didn't get you a lot of video. It got dark real fast. We have seven rows on the bottom, six rows up top, five on the bottom deep, four on top. So that's 60. Plus we got two extra up here and the one over on the side. So anyway, we've got, I don't know, what's 35? We've got 62. So all's good. Now I'm gonna not tell you what's going on right now. Let's just go to till tomorrow or the next day and I'll fill you in what I'm gonna do. Here's my two boys. Ah, Ahmed and Bartok. It's interesting that they stand next to each other and they actually are pretty good friends despite breeding season and all. And of course that's now expired. We're beyond that. And it's just a matter of getting all these little babies that are all dark brown. You can still see a little few brown light ones way in the distance. But it's just getting all these little guys grown up so we can work them and sell them. But uh, Ahmed, you big stud, you're pretty. What am I doing now? As you can see, this hay barn is full. And two weeks ago, I got a delivery of 124 bales of hay. Then yesterday, I got a delivery of another 20 bales of hay from my hay lady. The 124 were from someone different, and I needed a place to put it all. So, we have gone to town and we had ourselves a hay day. Now, two weeks ago, I shot footage of us getting all 124 bales in. Um, at least the first half of it the first day, then I had another half the second day, and then now I got it all in. So what I want to talk today about is hay. And well, you might say, well, what's so big deal about hay? Well, hay is what you feed your animals. And winter is coming on, and the buffalo don't have green grasses that just sprout up very much, especially not here, okay? So I need grass. Now, if you look behind me, that pasture is pasture seven and it has not had an animal on it in almost eight weeks and i don't even think my lawnmower at the house would cut it that short yeah that's pretty bad so we have not had a lot of rain in eight weeks it's just been butt dry man really bad so um i have left the animals all over here because that had that water pit uh what's it called a collection pond Everything just runs off, it's not spring fed, it just runs off. And because water is scarce. So they've had that pond to be able to drink at it, to stay cooled when it was really hot. And so I've made this my sacrificial pasture this year during the drought period. And I'm just waiting for a bunch of rain. Now, last night we got over an inch of rain. And last week or the week before we got about a half inch. We have had a hurricane go by, we've had storms that come by and they just split right around us. This area just has not gotten any rain. So it could be a lot worse. I could be up in Wyoming. I could be anywhere else that's been having really, really bad droughts, but um, I'm not. And the reason this is, I'm feeling it so much is I don't have the rest of my pastures set up for my pasture rotation, and I don't have a well set up. So I use rainwater to collect all my water. And when that isn't working, I've been pulling it from the lake, as you know. 
Well, the lake is butt dry. <laughs> really bad. And really bad. I'm on my last 4,000 gallons of water and that was it. And uh, I've already scheduled for a delivery service to drop off 6,700 gallons of water on Monday. That's how bad it is, waiting for a well. And so I'm gonna tell you the news right now. The well people called this morning, I'm getting a well. Maybe the end of next week or early next week after. So I have all this hay and um, let me show it to you actually. All right, this is the 124. This is stacked so many deep until we get to the end. Um, these bales right here are from the batch I just got last night. But I am so many rows, I think I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows deep of bales, and I think they are seven wide. I stacked them double high originally, and then I went to three high because I was figuring out I was running out of room. So <laughs> I was like, crap, I better try and do three high. And that is interesting to do, but I should have done that from the beginning. This gives you a good view of the three different sets of hay I've got. In the very, very back over here is the original red, white, blue flagged netted hay. This stuff right here is a sample of the stuff that Hay Lady also gave me. So she's gave me that one, and then she gave me these sets. So that's of two batches. She ran out of the other bale netting, and so this is different. But it should also be second cut, all in the same kind of batching. The stuff up top is the stuff I got from another guy from the attorney friend. And he brought me, like I said, 124 bales. Now, when bales, or when the rain gets scarce and grasses don't grow, like on my property, they're not gonna grow anywhere else either. So that means you can have shortages of hay. And it's a good practice when you start having some animals to build up a hay supply that can last you through potential droughts, okay? I'm not there yet. What I wanna do is I wanna have upwards of 200 bales that I work through this hundred this year, that hundred the next year. And every year I buy a hundred and I kind of rotate and have a rotation going just to try and avoid, you know, cost increases. When hay bales get scarce, price goes up. So as a comparison, I have bought hay last year in winter time, which is a bad time to buy hay, $90 every bale. This year it's been anywhere between 50 and $60 a bale. Okay, now that's actually pretty cheap for the amount of hay that you get. But when it gets scarce, you could be getting $150 a bale. I've heard of $200 a bale. Um, quality then also has to diminish. You're just barely feeding them crap hay um, because you can't afford the really prime stuff or there is no prime stuff. It's all crap. So you really want to have a stockpile of hay. So that was the first rule. If you're new, work on trying to build up a hay supply. Right now, I'm not quite there. Most of this is just to last through the winter and I'm hoping I don't have any problems as I start spring before first cut comes. Remember, first cut's gonna be in spring, maybe April, March around here is too early. April, probably May. Then you'll get a second cut, hopefully six to eight weeks later, and then possibly a third cut six to eight weeks after that, depending on grass growth, rain, and so forth. So after that, between now and until like March, nobody's cutting hay. Like generally, it's just not happening. So you get what you get while you can, and then after that you pray you don't need it, because otherwise you're paying through the roof. All right, now animals need so much food to survive, okay? And they need different types of food and certain qualities. Hay, um, I'm not gonna go into all the specifics of hay right now, because I think that deserves more of a discussion later on about how you do the nutritional analysis. The point that I wanna get at now is, um, you wanna understand the difference between first cuts and second cut of hay. One is more protein enriched and has more stuff than the other. It has different quantities and qualities and other things like this. Um, but then you kind of want to know what's in your hay. Thanks, Chica. Um, hay can be nutritious or it can be sucky, all right? And I'm not experienced enough to look at it and say, hey, this is what I got, okay? Um, based on the nutrition levels of what your hay is producing, the dry matter percent, um, protein, things of that nature, can affect what other supplements you might need to feed your animals to make sure that they stay healthy. All right, remember we're keeping these animals in a confined area like a pen or a pasture and they can't roam wild and get whatever they want whenever they want. So we need to be able to supply that to them. 
All right, so how do you get all that information? How do you get a sample? You have to take a sample and send it to a lab and they're gonna analyze it and they're gonna check out what everything is in there, okay? You have to get a sample of the hay. Now, you don't wanna to have to bust open the hay bale and try and pull a bunch of stuff out and shove it in a bag and mail it, right? No, that's gonna suck. I have been there when a bale explodes. It's not fun. So, they make these tools and these are called some sort of a auger? No, it's called a hay core sampler. And it does exactly that. It samples a core of hay. So anyway, all right, here's a general premise. Let me get this. Because I am going to take a sample from the original stuff from the hay lady, the second set from the hay lady, and then a sample from some of the bales that I got recently from the 124. And I want to see what their analysis is when I do a, it's not, it's not called a forage sample, it's called a hay sample or something like that. I don't know, feed sample, whatever. It, it, it does some analysis. But in general, you stick your drill on the end of this, you put a baggie right here, and here at the top is a bunch of teeth. I don't know if you can see, there you go. So you see a bunch of teeth. And that drills in one big long guy, and you push it in, and this thing becomes full of hay, you pull it out when you're done and you've bottomed it out. Did I read the instructions? Heck no, I didn't read the instructions. It can't be that hard, right? Then you have your plunger. You can stick it in and plunge out all the stuff to the very back. And that's where your hay comes out into the bag. So I think my wife said it was like a one gallon Ziploc bag you just put around the end. You pop it right in there, it dumps it, you seal it up, you mail it off, right? Simple, easy. Let's hope I don't screw it up. I'm gonna do something right here. Mark here. Mark here, Chica, you can stay here and help me. Okay, Perfect. job one, open the baggie. Okay, and then it's just a matter of putting this beastie on. Now, they do have a rubber band in there. I can't imagine I'm gonna need it, but uh, Hey, can't weigh that much. It's pretty snug. All right, now let's put the drill on. All right. Okay. Now we have the official setup. That looks kind of freaky. Oh, it went away. It was like Halloween-esque. You come up to the bale. I don't know. This is getting way too dark, guys. Way too dark. Okay. You come up to the bale. You push right on it. And you go to town, I guess. Where are we supposed to get anything from that? Ooh. Feels warm, baby. Look at that right there at the tip. You can see it. All right, let's plunger it. Chica, come over here and plunger it. Shove it in there. Just shove it in there gently. Gently. Oh baby, here it goes. Not a lot. Oh, that sucks. That's all we got. All your hard work. Okay, so we're gonna do a lot more samples of this. It's getting way dark, man. We might have to turn on the headlights. Look at this little hole. Right there. Plunger Chica. That's hot. It's a wee bit warm. There it goes. Okay. I'm gonna do this to a couple more and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got all the hay things and these are the samples. Okay, now. These nutter bars are amazing. So, camera broke. <laughs> Which means I didn't finish it that night. So this is actually better lighting. It's not so dark, the camera can focus. So this is the point. I went through and I got the samples. 
in the bag I got about four bales per bag and I went through like those three groups like I said the 124 the original batch from Hey Lady and the second batch from Hey Lady and so I have them here this is the first original 124 and then this one is batch number one from Hey Lady it's called B and then group C is that other second batch from Hey Lady this is the first one from Hey Lady This is the second one from Hey Lady. So if you look at this one, it looks more green still in it compared to this one. This is the 124. So when I look at this one, I'm trying to get rid of the glare for you. This looks greener, better than this one, but this one still looks greener in some ways than this one. Okay, so my guess is that these were still cut in the same batch from Hey Lady. It may just be that this one was exposed at my ranch longer, so it sucks more. And this one was more protected. I don't know. Um, but these, I would assume, is probably not as good a quality of hay as these. So I'm going to take these samples. I'm going to send them off for an analysis. And they're going to get me back a bunch of information that will kind of state which one is good, what it's good in. Um, I have a bunch of data. I'm going to cover that later in some other video. Um, I'm not sure how long it's going to take to get the results back. And frankly, this has already been spread out over two weeks, as you can tell. Um, so we're going to worry about that later. But I think the 124 is not going to be as good as the stuff I got from Hey Lady. And in fact, Hey Lady dropped by and I said, hey, did you see all the hay I got? She goes, yeah, I did. You know, of course, she's going to notice it. She's a sweet chick, man. I really like her. And... Um, I said, so is it as good a hay? She goes, no. I'm like freaking 200 yards from this thing. Anyway, she says you can see the different kind of grasses and coloring and other things like that. And she knows what she's doing and she knows what it looks like. And she said, no. So we will see if that hay is not quite as good. So anyway, we're going to cut it off here. Thanks for joining us. And uh, I'll share those results in the future. Um, hopefully not too far out. Remember to like and subscribe and keep with us. All right. See you later, guys. Bye.